There have been many vector designing programs that have tried to get people to leave the costly subscription of Adobe Illustrator for the affinity of a replacement. Affinity Designer is the program that has really showed a strong competition that might be until now. A new vector designing program came out just five months ago and from what I read it already looks like it could be a huge threat to Affinity Designer. So we will learn together about the new program called Vector Styler. I originally did not know about the program. A video found me on YouTube and that is how I learned about it. It currently does not have any reviews in the App Store as it is still new and it does not have too many videos on YouTube and that is why I am making this video to help get it more awareness. Looking at the interface, I can tell that they are very familiar with Affinity Designer. They also have no monthly subscription, a good long trial, have compatibility with Illustrator files, and their program is available for both Windows and Mac. They are pricier than Affinity by double at $95 and $94 in the Mac App Store depending on the package, but it looks like they have more features than Affinity, including an equivalent to Illustrator's Live Paint Bucket Tool, a Shape Builder Tool, Width Tool, a tool similar to Adobe's Puppet Warp feature, and the option to warp text and transform individual characters. Excuse me as my mind is blown. They also advertise features that Clip Studio Paint offers with their vector layers for more freestyle drawing, such as erasing open intersections, extract or extend existing shapes by drawing over them, bending vector objects, pattern brushes, and brush stabilizers. You can visit the links to the tools or tutorials on Vimeo in the video description. Be aware that this is not a tutorial. This is just a review. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. Hello, YouTubers. So I started making this video uh, five months ago. That was five months from when the program Vector Styler first came out. Now, my original goal was to have a to have a recording of my first impressions and so we both learned together however the recordings it came out to about five to seven hours and so I tried to condense everything to uh, under 12 minutes since that would be way too much to uh, watch so what I decided is I'm gonna share this little review that I made of uh, vector styler and then at the end of the video I'm gonna give a little verdict even though this is not a tutorial video I will have this video in my tutorial section of my website be aware of that and I hope you enjoy for this video I will be reviewing the Mac version of the program so I will not be able to cover how the settings may differ for the Windows version when first launching the program unlike others there is no automatic prompt to create a new document, so you need to go into the file menu. This is also where you change the document setup or create a new document from the clipboard. The panels menu is where all the panels can be located. That is straightforward. In Affinity Designer, the uppermost toolbar is known as the main toolbar, and the bar for the tool properties is known as the context toolbar. But for Vector Styler, both toolbars are merged into one and are known as the context panel. As you open new panels, you can dock them to where you want and undock others, opposite of Amadine, which limits you to dock panels only on the right side of the workspace, you have more control for Vector Styler. When you have a workspace that you are happy with and you want to save it, you want to go into the Vector Styler menu, Workspace, and then Save to Files. I highly recommend this because the first negative that I found with this program is how sensitive the panels can be. It is quite the setback when clicking into one 
panels change order or are undocked. This happens quite frequently. To resolve this, you have to lock all the panels in the Vector Style menu. This does make things less intuitive since I may like to customize my workspace as I go, but without panels jumping around. On the left side of the workspace, you will see your tools. By default, they are not the size as shown. To change the size, orientation, or add a column, you need to click into Panels and then Toolbox Style. Just like most programs in modern day, you have the option to work in either a dark user interface or a light user interface. If you would like to change your preferences, click into Vector Styler, Preferences, and then with a new window that opens up, the first tab is User Interface. Under UI Style of this category, you will see that you have more than just two options. I personally like it when programs do this. Even though the options are still black and white, at least you get the different shades of gray. In order to apply a preference, you must click the OK button. When working with the tools, you can double click one to bring up additional options. You may find some of the same options as what is shown on the context panel. The pencil tool can continue from endpoints and it has four different brush stabilizers. It's unfortunate that the tool does not draw in live time preview like Affinity Designer, but it features more control over smoothness. This means that you can manage how much the stroke auto smooths after drawing. When having all the strokes selected, you can erase them with the pencil tool by holding shift and then dragging your cursor over them. But in order for this feature to work, you need to have eraser checked off in the context panel. If you change the source to canvas, then rather than erasing entire lines, you only erase line intersections. I was having trouble with the simplifier tool and the node remover tool. To my understanding, these tools are meant to smooth out your lines and reduce the nodes, but they were not doing the job, so do keep that in mind. The pen tool works as expected. You can adjust the handles, reset your lines, and close up the path. I noticed that there were many mistakes on the online documentation. The first tool was called the pointer tool, but in the program it is called the transform tool. If you click on an object or group of objects, the selected items will be put in a bounding box. Then you can scale, rotate, and skew. You can hold shift to constrain. Holding control for Mac gives you temporary control over the nodes. The Shape Editor tool, also known as the Node tool, you can adjust and edit nodes. You get a large variety of shape tools, including one very similar to the Cog tool in Affinity Designer. Do be aware that you cannot control the points unless you hold Command or select the Shape Editor tool. When you are ready to convert your shape into curves, you need to click on the first icon on the bottom of the shape panel. You can merge different shapes together with the shape builder tool. I am sure that longtime vector designers will love this tool. There is a corner tool just like Affinity Designer in which you can create rounded corners and adjust them either independently or all at once. But what makes this program different is that you can create corners on the ends of the corners are you confused yet? And the corner size tool is a more manual way to create round corners. You can do this by painting over one. The width tool can change the width of an object at a specified region. And the stroke width brush can change the width manually by painting over the stroke. Do keep in mind, however, that the brush creates a different result than the width tool resulting to more jagged edges if zoomed in enough. But you can smooth it out easily with the Stroke Smooth Brush Tool. 
What I like about the eraser tool is that your lines do not auto smooth when you erase. Only the touched regions are erased and the rest of your lines remain untouched. You can also create vector patterns and apply a range of different custom presets. Okay, now it's time for the verdict. I'm going to go over the pros and cons and then I'm going to explain whether I think this is a program that is worth a purchase. Okay, so let me go to my list. For the pros, I said that it is incredibly feature rich. Yes, I'd have to agree to that. I said that it is the only vector program that got as closely equivalent to Adobe Illustrator while also featuring tools not in the program. Each tool presets a variety of additional and specific options. The other pro is I'd say it is very fair. So no monthly subscription for Windows and Mac and a very fast forum support. Right, so if you ask a question on the forum, you'll notice that you get a very quick response. And I'd say that the third pro is it is very well in performance. There is a great amount of speed for large files. So I was testing both Affinity Designer and Vector Styler, and I was opening a large file that I made in Adobe Illustrator and to see which program opens the file first. They were both very equivalent to the same duration. And I also opened another file of many artboards. And again, it was very close to the same duration. It's uh, very, very fast in that regard. And that seems very rare for an Adobe Illustrator competitor. Okay, now for the cons. There were a lot of workspace issues. Not all options on the context toolbar for each tool is, the disp is in display. The options that were on the context toolbar, they were not visible in the, dis in the screen display. Uh, this was very counterintuitive. And a lot of the docking of the panels and reordering them can be surprisingly difficult. So a lot of times when I was using the program, I would click into a tab and then all the panels kind of just undocked. And, and that is something, that, that's what I mentioned in the video also, how the panels can be uh, very sensitive in that regard. Another con is that there are incomplete areas. I'm interested in learning how to use one of the tools but the trim and join tool is not included in the documentation. And there is also no contour panel as mentioned in the documentation. Hopefully there is a mistake on my end. <laughs> yeah, so I was looking at these features and I noticed that there were a lot of differences between uh, what the documentation said and then what was actually in the program. and. But also keep in mind that this was five months ago when I was exploring all of this. And there were glitches on the website also for uh, mobile use. And the other con is bugs and counterintuitiveness. I had to quit the program several times and would have to restart it because of running into bugs. Now, as for whether I think this program is worth getting, at this point, I would say no. I think that this is a very feature-rich program. I think that they put a lot of thought into it. They show a lot of diligence in the support and the features and everything. You can tell that they really put a lot of effort into making this program but I do feel that it took off too fast. The bugs are very concerning. A lot of the workspace issues, documentation, you know, not matching what is actually in the program. All of it, I found it to be more frustrating using it. And if that's the case, then I don't feel that the program is ready yet. But I do want to keep an eye on this program because 
I think that, you know, it has a lot of potential. So that is my review, and please feel free to share your feedback in the comments.